what if I just figured something out about myself <laughs> on your show? I love it. You're such a good host. I'm taking this to my therapy this week. <laughs> <laughs> Best known for her role as Sophie on Bella and the Bulldogs, today's guest is an actress and voiceover artist. Please welcome to the Zoom, Lilimar. Hello. Hi. Before we get into anything, I have to tell you, I teach a special needs dance class and I was teaching it the other night and I shared that I was doing this interview with you and a few of them were so excited because they watched you growing up on Bella and the Bulldogs. Yeah, so just want you to fans <laughs> oh that's so sweet if I mean yeah. for any of them if that please tell them I say hi they don't I will them, I 100 like to... well oh we're starting off great that just <laughs> that made me so happy <laughs> so I'm um, behind the resume we always start by talking about how we met and we were just saying we met about a year ago working on a project I can't believe it's already been a year that's insane that's a lot <laughs> but yeah. yeah that's crazy I mean I knew I knew of you before we met I mean, I'm obviously glad that we got to like actually meet in person and 100%. Isn't it yeah, it's such a weird thing in LA to like know, I guess it's just um, someone like, know of someone, but not actually know them. And so, yeah, you know, I don't know, it's weird, but I'm glad to like actually know you as a person versus just, you know, know of you, you know? Oh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad I got to meet you too. Honestly, the circumstances were really cool too. I think it was because we were doing a project that I think just required so much like input and vulnerability and what are your strengths and what do you do it's like oh on the first day we met we're already talking about our like insecurities philosophical yeah <laughs> philosophical views on life like okay yeah. anyway i'm so happy to just have you on thank you so much for um coming on and thank let's you. just start from the very beginning where are you from i uh was born in venezuela my family is all from cuba everybody's cuban um so i would say i'm more Cuban at heart, basically. That's the culture I grew up in. And uh, once once we left Venezuela, when I was like about six years old, came to Miami and I kind of grew up in the States ever since then. Do you have any siblings? Just me. Oh, I thought you're an only child. See, I'm learning things about you. Yeah. <laughs> Are your parents in the industry? Not at all. I am the only person in this family that somehow was like, I'm going to be an actor. Like literally everybody's a medic of some sort everybody's in medicine and then i'm just i i think they're all artists at heart though like my my mom and grandma both did dance or ballet for years my dad is such a character everybody just kind of has i i feel that kind of artist personality or energy everyone's so extroverted mm -hmm. so i think i was just the one to be like hey let me make a career out of it <laughs> you have the craziest story i'm so excited for you to tell i remember do you remember we were like stuck in traffic after that shoot and you told me the whole story. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have the, I was telling my brother earlier, cause I was telling him that I was interviewing you and I was like, she has, she has a story where you're like, that doesn't happen to anyone. And it happened to you of your crazy yeah. story. So I'm excited to get into that. But before we even get there, do you remember any part of um, growing up in Venezuela? I do actually. I, I remember very little because I feel like my sense of like memory started coming in when I was like four <laughs> and I left when I was six yeah um but I, I do remember it because my my parents um they ran a rehab center so I kind of grew up with I think a, a kind of a community type of uh growing up where you know it wasn't just my mom and my grandma and my dad who were very very hands-on and absolutely, I have a luxury of having an absolutely amazing, dedicated, very loving family, but also it was talking to kids and to, you know, recovering addicts and to wow. older people. So it, it was a lot of across the spectrum of like physical therapy, uh, uh, kind of uh, recovering uh, from uh, alcoholics and, and things like that. And so I think since the very beginning, I, I, I think I just kind of found the wonder in, hmm the stories that other people had in the lives that they lived and recovery and uh, every, everyone had such a beautiful story in a way. So, um, and I mean, I, all of them, one person would, te would teach me this or to ride a bike. I remember specifically one that I can't remember ever what he was recovering from, but him and his wife were both there all the time. He taught me how to write in cursive. Like, so wow. that, 
Yeah, those are the kind of things that I do remember that stuck with me, even though like most of it's kind of blurry at this point because I was I'm so sure young. just the empathy that you got from being in that environment. Yeah, I, I, I think later on growing up uh, along the years, I truly got to appreciate where that com that came from and why I was so interested in people really and their stories and and what what goes on in their mind and what led you to this and da, da, da. because you know you don't really talk about it often but acting is very uh, involves a lot of psychology and sociology and a, just a human study and you're, you're you have this innate curiosity over human beings and their stories even human beings that you're just like i probably would have nothing in common with this person but they're fascinating everything about humanity is fascinating in a way that's probably where I got my answer where I was just like, I must have come from that. Wow. Mm. How interesting. <laughs> what were you like as a kid? Were you outgoing or were you, I actually can't imagine you quiet. So I'm assuming you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I was never quiet. Um, <laughs> if I remember myself correctly and because of the stories my, my parents have, I mean, I was apparently going from like room to room, putting on like, people's clothes and then I would go to another room and I would leave that person's jacket there and put on this other person and everything got mixed up and it was just but it was fun and I think my parents were like you know a lot of people actually appreciated having a young kid that was like you know laughing and screaming and going all around and just kind of wanting to talk to people and like you know not knowing what I'm saying but I'm like talking about like the facts of vitiligo and I don't know what the hell I'm saying but you know what I mean it's like right, I hear right. all the doctors saying it and it was just like I think for the beginning, I was always, I think they knew, they were like, we always knew you were going to be like a performer of like oh, some wow. sort. We just like felt you had this thing where you're just like, you want to be entertaining people. You want to make people laugh. You, you, you want to, you're, I was always doing something, picking up something, getting somebody shoe or brush or, so I guess very typical, like, oh, that's a theater kid in the making. Right, sure. right. <laughs> what brought you guys to the States? Uh, I mean, if you're already in the mindset of like, I already had to leave my home culture and my home due to a lot of things just because I needed to make that sacrifice for the betterment and the improvement and the future of my family. There's no connection anymore, I think. So now all everywhere else you go is just like, there's no attachment itself to where we're at. It's just, we're going to go wherever we see that we can progress. And I think at the time, my parents thought this is not the place for her. Once mm -hmm. they had me, it was like, we've had our run because they were there for, I think like 15, 20 years or so. Um, and then I came in, they were like, mm, no. Were your parents born there? No, my, everyone is from Cuba. So wow. my grandma essentially was uh, such a boss and got everybody out of Cuba and uh, they were in Venezuela for a bit, um, just kind of doing the uh, rehabilitation center. And then I think I came into the picture and that's when like you have once you have a child you have to start thinking about things so differently mm -hmm. I imagine so I think they were like okay we need to go <laughs> which but now it's like Miami uh, it was the closest thing uh -huh. um so yeah and there's definitely a lot of Cuban immigration for sure to, to Miami Miami is like predominantly Cuban I think mm -hmm. um but a lot of uh Latinos go uh, to Miami. Miami, in a way, is like a, a bit of a hug to, I think, our culture. It's predominantly run by Hispanics for the most part. And so I think this was just the first place of like, we had family here or like some family friends here. A lot of other Cubans had moved um, to Miami. So we were like, okay, we have a community there. We're going to be starting from absolute zero. We're probably going to need as much help as we can get. Mm -hmm. um, so we moved there and then LA came much later. So when did acting, especially if your parents weren't in the industry, when did the possibility of you being on TV, <laughs> that, how, how, yeah, all the things? I, I started modeling first, oh. which was like, like, but like when I was like, I was still in Venezuela when I was like four, my wow. mom was like, okay, you have so much energy. <laughs> you like to perform. Let me find something for you. And so what she could find at the time was like these little like, modeling uh mommy and me uh etiquette classes so mm -hmm. i was doing a lot of that um and i just liked it i was like okay yeah teach me the forks tell tell me about the posture tell me how to walk whatever i'm here for it um and so i did that for a while and like it wasn't until a couple years later i think it was like nine, i was like 10 
where my mom was like, hey, you know, if you actually, because she saw that I would go off on my own and sign myself up for oh. chorus and to learn oh, wow. violin and to learn piano. Like she just got the fee one day from the school and she's like, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. You, are you singing? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I thought that was fun. And she's like, okay. So I think she always saw, okay, she still likes performing. She still likes to be, you know, you know, entertaining people, whatever. And so she found uh, this, uh, I don't, I don't even think it's no longer a thing anymore, but there was like this very well-known uh, modeling school, academy, whatever called John Casablanca's Modeling and Career Center. And so she was like, I found this place. It seems really like the whole nine yards. There's like a 20 week uh, classes and all of this. They teach you everything. Do you want to do it? Are you sure about this? This is a little bit more serious. I was like, sign me. How um, old were you? That there I was 10. Were you just always fearless? I, <laughs> well, I mean, thank you. <laughs> if you think so. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think it a hundred percent comes from the women in my family, my dad too, <laughs> but, but I think just seeing a lot of very, very strong, very out there, no hair on the tongue type of women mm -hmm. that I think that personality, I think was just always going to be something that I had. Um, and I think they were very careful about nurturing that, like not to ever kind of put out any kind of fire that I had. So it was like, you know, just from the fact that they took into consideration, like, Hey, she's adamant on it. She, she, she still really likes it. Let's go little by little and see how, she, how serious your she is parents about it. Always supported whenever you express interest in anything. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I, and I, it's funny. I do get that question often too, when people hear that, like everyone in your family is a medic, it's like, yeah, where's, where's the trauma? <laughs> like, <laughs> did no one force you <laughs> to go to medical school? And I'm like, no. In fact, my parents urge me to never be in an operating room. So <laughs> oh. They're, They're like, like, if you're going to be in an operating room, it's because you're on Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. I was just like, you know what? Like, listen, we love you so much, but like, you can be a doctor if it's on the script. Right. 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 <laughs> For them, it was like, it was just like, look, they, they, I mean, I can't imagine they've gone through so much in their lifetime and so much sacrifice to not, you know what? Like we made it all the way here. I did this for you. I did this oh. to make sure you got some of the stuff I never got that you got the opportunities. Maybe I never got to see that, you know, if you're in a place that has so many outlets and so many things to do, why would I not let you do what very apparently makes you happy and gives you purpose? That's um, amazing. Did, not everyone has did that, you ever yeah. feel that pressure or no, not really. I, I, I kind of just took it. And I think I, I was always very, in a way, like as serious as you can get as a child about stuff. And like the more I worked and the more I learned, the more I like flung myself into LA and things were really zero to a hundred. I still liked what I did. So it was now it was really like me and them together making these sacrifices and working as hard as we could to, cause like that was the dream. And I, I think my parents- To be really on good, TV? To be on TV, to be a successful, actor i guess and or to be in la and you know later on i'd i'd, I'd see what successful actor looks like for me you know i think i think i was so more so grateful that i even had the uh, the kind of family dynamic that i had in order to be there that i think it wasn't until later where i was like oh you know but they've done so much for me and like uh yeah. and like so there was definitely a moments where i'm like I would be down on myself feeling like I'm not doing enough or I'm not succeeding enough. Um, and, you know, I have my family on my back, like, oh no, I'm disappointed in everything. But they would always be very quick to see that and be like, you're the only one doing that to yourself. Mm. We don't think that. We will never put that pressure on you. And you are valuable at every point. Don't do that to yourself at like in your 20s either. <laughs> like you're not that, a failed anything in your 20s. That fire that you had as a kid throughout your whole life up until now, has that light ever dimmed or you've really kept on to that spirit? Um, I've felt like my surroundings, I think, have dimmed. Like, for example, in 2020 with COVID and not being able to do anything at all, we all went through, everybody had their job or what they were good at ripped away from them. Having to move back to my, the place where I grew up here in Miami and like being physically away from my life, there were a lot of things where I was like scared because because I was a child actor, I think it just everyone may have that story where it's like, 
that's all I know. The entirety of my formative years was this. So to be away from it, I was like, am I failing? Uh, Mm -hmm. How can I come back? Will I be able to go back? Uh, Just am I a failure? You, You like my, I didn't notice that my, or how I felt about my worth was that it was intrinsically tied to how much work that I do or how uh, much attention I'm getting in the press or whatever. But there was this thing where it's just like, no matter a strike, a, a pandemic, this, that, or the other, no matter how bad I felt or how much of a failure I would feel, uh, I couldn't leave it. Like it, this was just something I can't leave. I like, it, it would be worse for me to quit this and do something like there's there is nothing else (laughs) you know what i mean it's like if i am even going to try something else it's still tied to this there was never a i'm gonna i have to give up moment but it was just like how do i come back from this or how do i make myself feel better how do i also fix my relationship with myself too what is your why as an artist Mm, i think i started thinking about that more so as an adult, because mm. as a child, it was just like, I'm into it, you know, yeah, like right. I just did it. And then next thing you know, oh, I've done all this stuff. I've just never stopped. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah. I question why I think I, I, I literally cannot leave it. I cannot do anything else. It's just because like, I don't even know if it's like this thing where it's like doing it is therapeutic for me. I love to do it. I love acting. I love having a script in front of me. I love understanding other people. I love entertaining people, but more than anything, I think it's a, a lot has to do with the community, right? Where it's just not only, it's it just like people in one way, shape or form are always involved in the process where it's like, when I have to do a character breakdown or really study who they are, it's like, I get into really learning about this person. People like them, their stories. And why are they like that? Why do they think that way? Or like, you know, what is the difference between them and me Mm. or then later on it's like getting to the actual work and you're working with other people and everyone kind of has to like to have a good production everyone has to be so connected and aware of everybody else's job and how to help each other out and really go at it together so I think there's there's just something about human beings that I find artistic and interesting and worthy of highlighting i guess so i think that's instead of getting maybe into sociology or psychology or this that and the other i guess this was my way of feeling like i um and connected to people oh i love that before you started acting were there shows or entertainers that inspired you yeah for sure i i mean i was definitely a big like big three kid of like Cartoon Network, Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, all in a rotation. <laughs> so, you know, I definitely, th- th- that dream was always there of like wanting to be in either of those uh, channels. Wow. And which is insane to think about now. My dad was always a big like film geek or, mm-hmm. you know, or he, sh- he was, he was very adamant of like, watch this movie with me. And yeah. I, and yeah, and it was like, I guess, I mean, he's a, he does uh, uh, child psychology, so I guess he knew how to oh. how to work it. He would be showing me like adult movies, like oh. rated R films, like The Godfather and things like that. And I'm like eight oh. years old, but it's just like I, because I think he understood a child's innocence plus their curiosity plus this is what you're showing interest in. Let me show you all there is to know about. It. Wow, amazing! And so since I was little, I was just kind of like what's that? What's this? What's that? What's this? And he would explain everything the best, obviously, that he could, depending on my age, because like Meryl Streep and Angelina Jolie and and, and um, Robert De Niro, these were like, I think some of that come to my mind, like some of the ones most mentioned in my house that like most caught my eye. I was like, I want to be like them. <laughs> were there kids on Nickelodeon that you looked up to? I definitely had like favorite characters. I was a big Hannah Montana girl. I was huge on the Powerpuff Girls. I I mean, I was all over Cartoon Network. Actual actors, I think I, I loved Hannah Montana. I loved Miley Cyrus. I loved um, Jade from Victorious. I'm yeah. just trying to think of all of them. It's just like, oh my God, I loved, I loved these growing up. Like Wizards of the Waverly Place, all of it. All the, yeah. all the classics of the early 2000s that we know. Up until going to LA, you were in traditional school in Miami? Yeah, I was went to a regular elementary 
I was in regular school, I think, until about sixth grade. And then seventh grade and onwards, all the way to the end, was homeschooling. Did you like traditional school? I did. I was a little, like, whatever about it. <laughs> it just, like, is what it is. Um, I mean, sometimes you have, like, great other kids and you're just like you had a great year other times you're just like oh my god these people are insufferable <laughs> um, but it is what it is but i yeah. even though like homeschooling has its reputation i think i had my social circle so set mm. with like some friends from school but mainly i made most of my friendships like at auditions mm. or you know um, acting schools and things like that and i had more in common i think more stuff in common with these kids so it wasn't like, oh, like I miss everything. It was like, I don't really okay. care either way. Yeah, I homeschooled <laughs> for high school and I was the complete same. So how did you go from a kid in Miami with parents who are medics to then finding yourself auditioning in LA and then, you know, ending up obviously on a Nickelodeon show? Yeah. I, mean, I know the answer. I'm like prompting the story that I know and I'm really excited for you to tell it because it's <laughs> insane. <laughs> I know something you don't. Um, <laughs> it was basically, I, I I had already been doing auditions and, and little jobs here and there, here in Miami, what I could do. Because mm -hmm. like here, there was just mainly commercials and um, soap operas and things like that. I wasn't a fan of either. So <laughs> I just did it for the experience, for the social aspect, and just to be around the work and the cameras and, and stuff like that. Um, cause it was always fun at the end of the day, it was always fun. And it was a learning experience. LA was not a thought in my mind. I was, I was a bit young too. So I don't think I was that far ahead, but if I ever thought of it, I was like, oh, when I'm 18 or when I'm like, you know, a big girl, I guess we're going out there. I don't know. I didn't, you know, I didn't fully know how, how that would work, but that was my dream. So Nickelodeon was the one that randomly was doing kind of like a talent scout, an open call <laughs> casting yeah. type of deal. In Miami, I think they did one in LA as well. I don't know if they did it anywhere else. That was going around. And obviously everybody, all the actor moms, everybody's spreading the word. And my mom was like, do you want to do this? I was like, no. Oh, wait, <laughs> like, how old are you at this point? Like 11? I was 12, 12 or 13. You said no? And I was like, no, that's a scam. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I mean, I would feel the same way. Yeah, because I don't know if you've ever heard that because- I went to one of the Disney ones that were in LA. I'm sure it was a scam. <laughs> so did I. So I think when I was like 11, probably, I don't regret the experience because I did learn a lot. That's probably where I got most of my actual like usable foundation for acting. <laughs> That's Because I can't use soap opera acting for anything. There was like those like over the radio, do you want to be a Disney Channel star? Like <laughs> Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez. I'm like, Justin Bieber doesn't even go to the, okay, whatever. Other moms got into it. My mom was like, okay, fuck it, go. Um, and so I What went, made you decide to go if you didn't want to? Like I went to the Disney one when I was 11, like just because I'm, I'm riding the wave, right? Okay, let's go, what is this? And uh -huh. it just ended up being like a two week intensive, um, oh. which was very great for me. It was with um, like the, the guy that plays like Mr. Mosby and the guy that plays like the bell, the bell guy, the bell boy or whatever. Like all those people from like a Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Uh -huh. Like, so it was good learning for Max oh, okay. in LA. At the end of the day, I was like, okay, whatever, it's worth it. But since I had that experience, I was like, oh, this is probably gonna be another, you know, two week, like just class. And they don't say that it's a class and it's like a ton of money. I was like, dude, I'm not going to this. My mom was the one that convinced me. It was like, you never know. The script is fun. This isn't anything to you. You don't lose anything. Go and do it. Like, I promise you, go ahead and do it. And I was like, wow. okay. I don't know if she had, you know, that, that mom third eye where they yeah. just know stuff. And she was like, just go. And the funny thing is I really extra did not want to go because it was on my birthday. You're and I was like, or 13 I, I was turning, I think I was turning 12. Uh-huh. Or no, I think I must've been turning 13. I think I was turning 13. And I didn't, I wanted to do literally anything else other than that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, so I took photos with like my mom's best friend that she's a photographer. And like, we took photos and like, we went for ice cream and then whatever. And I think, um that other yeah like I did the audition in the morning they told me come back at 5 p.m you have a call back and I was like what was okay. the audition just like a monologue it was it was a dialogue it was like a two-page three-page scene mm -hmm. um and it was uh I can't oh my god it was actually kind of funny I it was I think it's something they wrote 
for that specific reason. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it was a part of any other project. Um, but it was like this thing where you want to try this like magical, like, like crazy techie, uh, remote and like on your TV. And the thing is like, once you change every channel, you become the channel oh, cute. or you're like immersed in the channel. So yeah. it was kind of like, you're going to have to do like four different characters at once. And one was like, you know, you're a newscaster. The other one, you're like, uh, the music channel while everyone did a song. I think what set me apart was that I sung Beyonce. Like I oh. watched it on purpose, but like. Oh, wow. So Whatever. you were prepared for this. Oh, I prepared. I prepared. I was like, I don't want to do this, but if I'm going to do this. <laughs> have to prepare. Oh my I was God. like, I have a reputation to upkeep. <laughs> they gave me immediately, like, come back at 5 p.m. for a callback. I was like, all right. I did every other birthday thing that I wanted to do during that day. And then I came back at 5. There were, like, a thousand. I'm not even kidding. A thousand children. Because this is a... You're, you're coming to like middle of nowhere. Uh, Miami is big. No, it's not. You're coming to the middle of nowhere where you're like, come and audition for Nickelodeon. Everybody and their dog is there. So I was <laughs> like, okay, there's like a thousand kids. And I think only like, I think like max, like 15 to 20 got a, a call back. And I was like, okay, oh, well, I'm here. And then at the end of the day, uh, just did it. And then I didn't hear anything like a week for like a week later, then my mom gets a call and I'm in the middle of my swimming class <laughs> and she's like, Lily Ma, Lily Ma. And I'm just like, uh, uh. <laughs> and then until my teacher was like, your mom is calling you. So I go there. She's like, there's a, there's a gringa on the phone. There's an American woman on the phone. I don't know what the hell she's saying. <laughs> and I was like, I, she, I think it's like from the Nickelodeon thing. I was like, hello. And she was like, you were chosen. We'd like to fly you out to LA to do a two, a two week in intensive um, or like a two week workshop. Uh, and then at the end, it was a, um, a showcase for the Nickelodeon executives. And I was like, sure. <laughs> I was like, okay. I still don't believe excited. anything at this point. You thought it was still a scam? Yes. Because what do you mean you're flying me out to LA? It just sounded so sketchy to me. Everything was sketchy. I was like, what is this? And that's totally, wait, so what did your parents think? My mom was like a little weird about it too, but my parents all got together. We all got together like a family. We always did family meetings and they just kind of decided, okay, what are all the details? Let's look at what it would be to, to work at Groundlings, which is a very well-known, you know, uh, comedy, uh, mainly comedy acting school. A lot of SNL actors have been there, whatever, just for anyone that doesn't know, but I didn't know about that. We don't know what the heck Groundlings is. So we look it up and, you know, we're getting all the information. We're just like, okay, I guess this is legit. I guess me and my mom are going to LA. Um, and it wasn't until we like get to the hotel where we were like, oh, oh, you got it like that? Okay. It was nice. Yes, we stayed uh, at the W Hotel. We were there for two weeks. I know that for sure it was two weeks. Was it over the summer or were you in school? I think it was over the summer. I think okay. it was in June uh, because my birthday is in June. It might've been in July. Okay, um, but you didn't have to miss school or anything. No. Did you tell me that Sean Liu was in this? Sean was in it, yeah. Was anybody else that now you still keep in touch with? Yeah, I, I think we all kind of still keep in touch pretty much. Uh, if some of us, a little bit more than others but i think all of us are kind of the same of like keeping up with each other on instagram and things like that yeah. um sean lu was in it sean ryan and jace norman who were both on henry danger uh were in it storm reed was wow. in it uh that was my girl she was she was the, the she was the tiniest one too she was uh, like 11 back then so it was like oh my god breck Haley, my my co-stars oh yeah. they were all in that workshop yeah and did everybody go to one of those open calls to get to this workshop? I think so. I, I, I didn't ask like too many questions, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I was just like, okay, I'm here. <laughs> but from what I gathered, it was like, okay, everyone must have done. Um, there must have been something, it pro probably like different. I think it, it might have been maybe like the PR team must have been different in LA than it was in Miami. Yeah. But I think I was the only one from Miami. Breck was still living in Texas. Everybody else was from LA. For me, it was honestly very, uh, the effort and the sacrifice my parents did later of like, okay, let's gather 
some money. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do to like make really try and get you out there for like two months mm. or three months, just during pilot season back then. Everybody else got to stay. Everybody else lived there. And I think I think Breck was going back and forth at the time already. But I was like, oh, it doesn't matter if you already did, like if they know you and they saw you in the showcase, if you're not there and like actively there in front of them auditioning and doing all of the stuff, you're kind of going to be overlooked. You're probably not going to be thought of again. So I was like, okay, we probably have to go. We probably should take advantage of the momentum we have now that they just saw me um, and maybe think well of me to just like, okay, let's get a manager. Let's do all this stuff. So and um, yeah, one of the kids from the showcase was the one that set me up with his manager. The two week uh, workshop, was it amazing? Insane. It was so good. Like we had amazing teachers and it was for me like- you're like, it's definitely thrill. not a scam. Once you're- It's hundred percent not a scam. I was like, okay, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Understood. Um, but it, it, it was just nice. Cause like, it, it was everything that I wanted. Like you couldn't find classes like that at all, barely, if any, in Miami at the time. Now there's a little bit more, I think, uh, a little bit more of an industry, but like back then, not at all. And and this was like, oh my God, I get to really act the way I've seen it always on TV with people that have actually worked with these people, like with uh, people that have worked with S SNL actors, like what the, where the hell am I at right now? <laughs> So I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to do my best. And all of these kids were so hilarious. Everyone was so funny and talented and like everyone can sing and dance and whatever. Like, I was just like, I'm like starstruck over like everything. Did you have imposter syndrome or you were pretty confident? I think luckily I was pretty confident in myself. I, I think I knew, like, I, I, I think the way I thought of it at the time was like, I may be someone that hasn't had any work the way some of these kids have had um like insane work i mean Haley already when she was like i don't know how old uh, she's always been a superstar she was in like hannah montana you know what i mean so like it's these little things that at the time to like a 13 year old you're like that's insane like i <laughs> how am i in the room with these kids right now was what i kept saying but i was like i always like told myself and my mom and my family always told me like listen wherever you come from, whatever you've done, you're here now. Yeah. Someone saw something in you that to them meant you are meant to be here. Wow. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to question it. <laughs> I'm not going to ask questions. I'm going to take it. It's just amazing how much support you've had from your family and how much their um, belief in you helped shape. I mean, if, if your mom didn't Insane. encourage you to go to that audition, your whole life probably would have looked different. Yeah, I was like, I, I, I'm so happy she didn't listen to me at all. <laughs> the, the nerve of this woman. <laughs> what did you what did you see? Like, what, what did you what was in the air for you that day? That you're have just you like, no, you that? should go. I, I think I did. And it, and it was probably one of those. Uh, I, she definitely has a mindset of like, you never know what you're going to get hmm. out of these things. Yeah. You know? And if she saw that, listen, hey, it's just, for now, it's just an audition. We don't have to put in an insane amount of money. We don't have to go out of our way. It's barely 15 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get anything from it, you don't. And if you do, there you go. So yeah. I think that was her mindset. And she's like, she just had a feeling like, nah, go ahead and do it. That's just a great way to live your life. Because you, you do never, oh, 100%. You never know. Yeah. Because I, 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 mean, I think for me, it was like I learned from last time where I was like, but I was a kid. So I was like, oh, it's not what they're promising. You know, I'm not going to be a star. I'm not going to be a star. But, you know, for her, it was like, okay, even if it's like the same thing as the other one, we have that experience. We learn from it. Like, we know now. But if it ends up being what they say it is, you were there. I was like, okay. Wow. So the showcase, were there agents and managers and casting directors? And was that really good exposure yes. for you? yeah that was that was it that was it for me because i don't know if they allowed reps i i can't remember um but they de it was definitely like a bunch of uh <clears throat> a bunch of writers uh producers uh, nickelodeon executives things like that um so it was definitely like oh you know once we did these 12 of us, once we did like their auditions later, just for shows and whatever was going on at the time, there was a huge pilot season back then. Um, they kind of already knew who we were. Mm. You might have already had somebody eyeing you like, 
that kid was so good or like I feel like they already might be good like that doesn't mean you're gonna get chosen but like it's good to have that wink in the casting room and you didn't have an agent at this point no I did not I didn't have anything in LA I got my manager at the time uh I'm so incredibly grateful to her Susie Mains um that my it was another kid Sean uh that he had not Sean Liu other Sean (laughs) (laughs) Sean Sean Ryan who was on Henry Danger um he's the one that that his mom was so incredibly sweet and like kind of gave us a little bit of a rundown on a lot of stuff and said like you know this is our manager and like we got in contact with her and then with Susie she was the one that gave me you know an agent and this and the other and like kind of understood oh this is how it works here so yeah I've had a completely insane story that absolutely went from zero to 100 that not everyone has were you nervous for the showcase do you remember I think I was a little bit I think I've always luckily been pretty good at turning, trying to turn nervousness into excitement. Mm. So I I was more so like, I mean, again, I've never gotten to do this. I've never done like a play S type of deal. Like I've never done any of that. So I was just like, okay, big time, let's go. And it was just fun, I think. Like we had already rehearsed all of these. Like I knew what I was doing. Um, It was with these kids that I formed a friendship with so I was like you know what I'm gonna try and we I think we got to do the show twice um so it, it was like okay like relax I got it I can we could do it um so I I think I, I was always like nervous but I think it was more so like I'm, I'm dying to get out there and just like because once I'm out there I think I'm on autopilot I don't remember anything I do even on set most of the time <laughs> wow. like if it's a good scene or I was able to really uh, uh the atmosphere is good and you're able to really get into it. There are times I have no idea what the hell I just did. <laughs> I was like, oh, did that look good? Great. <laughs> it so felt after great. the showcase ended, you stayed in LA. Did you even come home at all? I did come home, yeah. Because I, back then it was like, we, it was every, I think there's a saying in Spanish, like, lo que está para ti, nadie te lo quita, or something like that, um, where it's just like, what's for you will always be for you. Nobody can take it away, right? Because for me, it was like, all of this stuff is happening back to back. And now we have like the problem of like, okay, we're, you know, we're okay, but like, we're still building a foundation in this country. Like we're still trying to do things like, you know, things in, in Florida are different to California. So we're just like, where the hell are, are where are we going to stay? Like, this is so expensive. This is so insane. Um, what do we do? And like, I, in this little theater group that I was in at the time, I ran into this girl that lived in LA. That's also an actor was studying and she had uh, a one bedroom apartment. She's like, you're more than welcome to stay with me. No way. So you me and my mom lived Miami. in her living room for like a long time. <laughs> Did you meet her in Miami or you met her in LA? Yeah, because she was originally from, she's Colombian, but she was originally like, like grew up in Miami. Her family was there. So she would always kind of come back, see her family, help out, you know, other, you know, uh, theater teachers and things like that, that she had. And in one of those like days where I went to theater class, I we met her and I think her and my mom got to talking and like, what are the odds that like, she found us like, you know, trustworthy enough or like good enough to be like, I'm, I'm more than happy to offer you my space. Like nobody does that. Wow. Um, so yeah, we just helped her out kind of like a roommate situation with rent and we stayed there and what we had and like, that's how we were able to be there for a little bit, um, two, three months or something while pilot season happened to at least uh, go to these auditions. And then were you auditioning like crazy? There, there was, yeah, there was definitely a lot going on at the time. And uh, there were like six different pilots uh, going on for Nickelodeon at the time. And me uh, and Haley, funnily enough, got booked on two of them uh, going on. So it was, and there was like, we were both like really excited because like, not only did we do both of these together, um, but it, there was a lot of rumors. Pilot of that didn't go through, didn't get picked I, up. We did one pilot and that didn't go through. The other pilot oh. was Bell and the Bulldogs. Oh my gosh, that got picked up. So we were like, oh my god, like we hope it gets picked up. But then there was like rumors, you know, people talking of like, oh, it's definitely going to be like from the ones that you've done, it's going to be that. It's going to be either or. So we were like, oh, right. so like either or, we have a job. Is <laughs> I like where that's going. And apparently, yeah. And Bella was the one that got picked up. Can you talk about the other one or no? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I loved it. That was my, uh, no, that wasn't the first first. There was another one that I did. It was another pilot that it was called Inner Diva. 
and I played six versions of myself. And Storm was in that. It was me. It was me, Storm, and 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 Jenna, Jenna Ortega. Oh my God, they were babies. Wow. They were babies. It's fascinating to hear about all of the the projects that didn't go right because it's oh, all yeah. still part of your your story and led yeah. you to the next. Absolutely. How old were you in that one? That one, I was probably like proper, like 13, I think. Bella, I was like 14. So you booked uh, like pretty much right away. Y- yeah, I was like, I was surprised because like, I mean, how many auditions have I been to in Miami where it was just like, so there's so much going on and you're just like, okay, you got some, you you, you win some, you lose some. But this was so this like- inner diva, was it for Nickelodeon or for Disney? Mm-hmm, that was Nickelodeon too. You, Storm Reed, and Jenna Ortega, and yeah. it just didn't get picked up. No, that one didn't get picked up. Um, it was really wow. cute, but yeah, that one. Didn't get... And then it's funny because like you have stuff like that, and you wonder like how people know each other. It's like you have no idea how many projects we've done like together that just didn't get picked up. <laughs> and then there was another pilot. There was another pilot. Yeah, that one was called Smart Alec, and I met some good friends there too. There I played, there I I got that one, I think, because I was the only one that did like an accent. Um, it wasn't in the script, but I think my, my, um, my manager knew that I could do a Spanish accent, obviously, because that was something that I did in the showcase. Because, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I don't want to put it in that light, but like the second you have like the one Hispanic person in the room, you're just like, can you do a Spanish accent? Yeah. <laughs> So I guess, but no, I guess I used that to my advantage and I used it for that character and they were like, oh, you brought something new to it. Like this might work out. And luckily I, I got that one as well. And were you just enjoying the ride or was it really hard when these projects didn't go through? It was a, it, it was a learning curve because I didn't know about pilots. Like mm-hmm. I had never done a pilot before. You didn't do that in Miami either. It was just like uh, soap operas have a very different schedule. They work very differently. Like the second you learn about it, it's like, oh, it's a new soap opera. And like these three A-listers are a part of it already. You know what I mean? And it's just kind of like, oh, what's done is done. Like no one does a pilot, I think. And at the time it was just like, the schedules were insane. Like I did one soap opera and it was a migraine and a half, (laughs) you know? And it was just like, you're shooting like multiple parts of like different episodes a day. And it's just chaos versus this was like, oh, like, it, it, it was like five different auditions or stuff going on all the time. There's so many layers to it. It might get picked up, it might not. And you're just like, oh my God, the money behind this stuff. Like what is going on? Yeah. So at first it was like, I definitely did get bummed when certain projects wouldn't go through. I had a little bit of a grasp of, uh, and my, uh, again, my, my parents, dude, like it, it was just on top of it all the time. Like, ah, ah, ah. I don't want to see you crying. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, but it's also very like, they, they were learning as well, but I think they had enough as adults to understand rejection and how to come out of it. Right. So it's just wow. kind of like, listen, you did your best. You had a great time. This is all you learned. This is what it brought to you later on. If it's not meant for you now, then it was just meant to happen as a lesson. Wow. All of these things. Right. So it was just like, okay, I still feel really, really bond. Like I wish we would have done it anyway, but it's like, okay, relax. Like I, I've gotten no's before. Like it's, it's the same concept that has to be, let's move forward. Do you still have that mindset now? Definitely. Definitely. I think now more than ever, I go about work and I think just everything in life is like, you know, if it's not a, if it's not a blessing, it's a lesson type of deal. Like mm-hmm. if it's not meant to be all the way, it, it, what happened was what you needed to grab. You know what I mean? The lesson was just there. You didn't need to go further. So booking Bella was your literal dream in life come true. Yeah, a hundred percent. That was like, for me, it was like, I, what, what's going on right now? Like that, I think for sure it was like, to be honest with you, Julia, I didn't really like process anything that happened in my career or anything in my adolescence until I moved back here and turned like 20. Really? Do you think it's because you were just going nonstop? It was, it, it, after a certain point, it was no longer slow. It was just so much stuff going on. I mean, Monday through Friday, you're working. The weekends are theirs too. Like you have either promos <laughs> or PR events or, and you're just like, oh my God, what, what, what is all of this stuff? And you're so, it was kind of like learning to be in a new state, in a new culture. I, I can't even emphasize how different Miami and uh, 
LAR and, and just like the Miami's so I, I there were no Cubans around me like this works completely different. So this was the first time I felt like I was in the States for real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to be honest, so it was it was it was the change of state. It was the change of pace. It was a change of culture. It was a change of everything. So it was like, that's a lot, especially for like a 13 year old. You're like, I'm living my dream, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it was very fun, but I think no matter what was happening, LA is just a place. And especially that industry is just a place where something's always going on. And if you're not a part of it, you're trying to figure out your next step to be a part of it again. So it's a little bit of a sugar rush, I think. And you're constantly like a little bit addicted to it where you're always trying to figure out what to do next and how to promote yourself. And so I think it wasn't until I fully got completely stripped away from it that it was like, wow, now it's just me in these four walls and like processing everything I just have ever done. Wow. Oh, I'm sure that must've been wild. Oh yeah, therapy was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> therapy was great. When you started having fan interactions, was that when you realized that now you are literally this Hannah Montana for another kid? I think so. I think it was a it was a culmination of a lot of different moments. But I think going to, I never got used to it. Tr truthfully, if I were to go and do it right now again and like have that happen again, where I would go to a Kids Choice Awards and people are like saying my name, like they're not even saying like Bella the Bulldog, I'm not even saying Sophie, which was my character at the time. It was like Lilimar. I I don't I don't know if I can highlight how incredible incredibly hard that is to grasp. Mm. Where it's just like it's exciting, but like it I, to this day, if you put me back in that, it, it's like who who the, who who am I? <laughs> what do you mean? It's just so it was very like wow, you know, like people are looking at you. People somehow know who you are. It, it was kind of like. It was kind of insane, yeah. That's a lot of responsibility at 14. What did yeah. your parents think? Did they want to make sure you used your platform, you know, for good? I think they, they weren't very, uh, uh, like, on me about it. I think it was more so, like, I mean, we had a Nickelodeon. Uh, I think they, did they do this every time you started a show? Yeah. So like every time I was on a show, we would get media trained. So I had media training and we had a contract. And obviously in the contract, it was like, hey, you know, take it easy. This is a child's, uh, a children's channel. You know, some fans were like around my age too. So I kind of made like online friends in like different countries that I still have today. Yeah. Wow. Um, yes, it's, oh. it's super, it was super beautiful. Everything was like shiny and glorious and amazing and exciting. And I think it wasn't until like later on getting used to it and getting some criticism here and there that you start to be afraid for your image. Mm. And I think for me, it was very, there was, you know, a, a handful of uh, moments or situations that happened, I guess, behind the scenes that made me fear for my career. I think have that fear, like a little bit repressed, but always ever present. Where it's just like, if I do the wrong thing, or if I upset the wrong people, carpet is taken from under you, like, I'm probably gonna go back to Miami, like, that's where it ends. And obviously, everything is so much more uh, catastrophic when you're a, like a teenager, everything is huge. You know what I mean? It's like the same feeling of like getting called to the principal's office for something you're just like, I thought it wasn't a big deal. And now you're like facing possibly getting expelled, like, yeah, you're gonna freak out there were times where I really came to resent social media or I think mainly crap like the crowd or, or, or fans sometimes because I think you know the support starts flooding in which is a beautiful thing but there are times where people just criticize you for no reason or hate you for no reason I don't know invent rumors about you that you to this day can't trace where the hell it started wow. or like a bunch of different stuff that like as a child you're like I don't even know how I'm a part of this like I yeah. don't get it Especially if you're not one to do that either. So you don't really get the mentality behind it. Um, so that was all new to me because I didn't understand strangers doing that. I didn't, I like, I don't know these people. So I was like, I didn't get it. And I think, you know, it was things where like, dude, I, one time I even got like in trouble for using a knife emoji. Oh, wow. I was like, I'm 16 years old. <laughs> 
what the fuck and so i don't know if i can cuss on your show sorry you're fine you're fine um but i for, i i literally remember this i was a fan of scream queens which already i'm promoting an adult comedy but whatever people choose what they want to <laughs> what they want to fight about and i was like it's my favorite show i i love the way they dress i'm dressing like them this is my new thing right it's like you it's become your new personality trait and then like i'm using like all the little stuff and it's like very like bows and hearts and butterflies and knives and like stuff because it's a it's a thriller it's a you know it's a slasher comedy whatever and i use it and then people in my comments for the first time are not being all fun and giggles it's like you know like you should be aware of like the type of imagery you use and da -da -da -da. and i'm over here like like my heart drops on myself like what did i do am i gonna get an email from network i'm 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 fucked <laughs> essentially so it was like oh so there's things like that seeing other coworkers or other uh, peers of mine in the same industry within the same, uh, you know, Disney, Nickelodeon land, getting called out for things that now as an adult, I'm like, that was vile. Like we were children and we were doing things that were very normal for our age. A normal teenage experience was something that we really, really had to try and keep off the internet or else you're just gonna have you know, either a, a, an email from your network saying to take it down or and you don't want to be called out or like just, you know, fans saying stuff that not everyone really has the heart for that. So this was all probably not part of the experience that you fantasized about when you wanted to be an actor. No, I didn't. I, I, I think I, I everyone always knows like the child stars go crazy type of thing. But like you don't really like I didn't really think about it. Obviously, when you're that young, you're not really putting you're not thinking so much into it so deeply. You don't put two and two together. You're not criticizing society. Yeah. So it's, you know, it wasn't, and, and I think I didn't see myself as like a child star or a child actor or like a, even like a Nick Nickelodeon kid or somebody's childhood or whatever, because you don't, you don't, you can't grasp that either. Yeah. I think when yeah. you're that young, you're just like the ones that you saw no, those are the Nick kids. Those are the Disney kids. Hannah Montana. Like, th those are famous. They're famous. I'm like some other variant, you know? <laughs> so I'm something else. Like, we're not the same. And I think because you're living it yourself, you're just like, but I, I don't, I haven't experienced that or I haven't seen that or I haven't heard that from friends or I don't know. It could be going on, but I don't know. Um, so you're just kind of living on your own and you're just like, you don't really, uh, you just don't have those interactions like you know at home by yourself like in your hometown you're not interacting with thousands of people you're not getting criticisms you're not like you have bullies at school but like you know how to handle that this is like another thing you know what i mean so it's just like like a girl and at the time i would be like you almost kind of question yourself you're just like am i a good person or not <laughs> wow because for me it was like it's hard to because as an adult you're just like hey it's a contract. You can do whatever you need to do in your personal time. You can still be a great person or you're still you and there's still nothing or they still may be nothing wrong about it. Just don't post it because, you know, we have like, you know, eight year olds that watch our show and we're catering to that. Fine. Totally fine. If you give that to me now, I'm like, OK. Um, but at the time, these feel like very heavy rules. I was new in town. I was new to everything. So it's just like, I feel like the, you, you feel like the slightest mistake is going to take everything from you. So I was like, I can't do any of that. And I think I internalized it without even really uh, understanding that I, I suppressed that so much and put that inside of myself so much that it wasn't until later where I realized, you know, I couldn't even wear a mini skirt. Like I was scared to go out wearing a mini skirt. You know what I mean? It's just like, wow. oh, so is that appropriate? throughout your formative years I'm sure really had an impact on everything in your life would you say that for someone who has not had the experience of like being a child star growing up on a tv show this conversation would be the most challenging part or something that people wouldn't think about when they think about this experience mm, maybe so I think a lot of people nowadays are I, I think are a bit more or even highly aware of the social cost, I guess, or like, you know, how people are always going to criticize you, however famous you get, or recognizable you are, you're going to have that, you know, even more people that just don't like you for some reason, or don't like what you have to say, or just don't fundament fundamentally agree 
on the same things and just, you know, people are the way they are and social media is the way it is. I think now we have a lot more as a collective years under our belt using social media and criticizing it and questioning it. Um, social media itself, the people behind it and our behaviors interacting with it. So, you know, cause if you go back to like early 2000s or even, you know, mid 2000s, like there was way less of that. Um, and sometimes we go back and we like think of those things and like what would be in the headlines and maybe for us like personal experiences and you're just like, that would never happen now. <laughs> like, oh, that was deplorable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was filming Bella everything that you dreamed of? I think a little bit. Yeah, I think it was, um, it was definitely at first very like, oh my God, I'm here. Later on, it just kind of settled in like, okay, this is my job. I do this. Uh, I've learned a lot. And I think more than anything, I became much more one confident in myself and two more open to trying new things right especially within acting like other stuff where i'm just like oh i don't know if i can do that or like that's kind of embarrassing or like blah, blah. like the, little by little these things went away and you're just like no i'm confident i can do it or like you know what whatever let's try it if it doesn't come out great then it doesn't it's fine like i think that job in itself and i think we were absolutely privileged to have a, a lot of commodities and very very wonderful people to work with very um nurturing happy individuals i just love their job mm -hmm. um that i think we kind of had a a place where we're just like we really enjoy what we do so it was very fun and it was like one of if not the biggest uh learning experience so you just never went back to school in miami <laughs> no <laughs> what did your friends think now all of a sudden you're on tv yeah i i don't even know i I didn't have, to be honest, very many friends like in school. Again, like most of my friends were 100% uh, like uh, acting school, casting, this or that. So, um, and I didn't have a phone back then. So, wow. <laughs> so luckily I, I, I didn't have like them blowing up my phone, like all of this stuff going on. <laughs> but um, sometimes I would use my mom's phone. Sometimes we would, we would interact like on my iPod, like through Instagram <laughs> or like, yeah, we're going back to those years. Um, and so, they, yeah, I had friends that were like proud of me, that saw it with me, but I think I mainly made like my main batch of friends definitely in LA. Like, to be honest, I think uh, to this day, I, I only keep maybe like three or four friends from my childhood. There was a lot that were just like from school and then we just now still kind of support each other. Um, and some of them I've gotten into contact with again and they're like, it's cool to hear about them. Like, and a lot of times they say very positive things um, and they're doing, pretty well too just completely different change of lifestyles and it's crazy to see us from like second graders to this yeah. um and unfortunately there were also a lot of people that were very uh uh not very good willed or didn't wish well um yeah because i think also the entertainment industry here was very very small um and it was very dance moms light <laughs> to say the least my mom like tried her best to like get out of it and for LA, it was even better because she would just pretend that, like, she's like, oh, I don't speak English, so no one can speak to me. So she was fine over there. But, That's um, hilarious. Oh, yeah. She's just like, that was the best thing I ever did. And, <laughs> but um, here, she just kind of kept to herself. And, like, I don't, I don't ever question wanting to do uh, the most for your kids and making sure they get everything. But, you know, some people were a little out of line. <laughs> and not everyone was happy that, oh, this, it, it was a lot of, like, why is she over there? <laughs> like, you know, what she got? Like, what do you mean LA? Oh, she's in Hollywood now, you know? Like, you're always gonna have people that say that. Did you go straight from Bella to Night Squad? Um, I think there was like a year. Okay. In between, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that whole year was just me kind of like recollecting and just like, I think my thing back then was like, I really wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just uh, auditioning. I think at the time until uh, Night Squad was came along. So throughout your teenage years, I mean, obviously acting took up most of your time, but did you have other passions or interests? Probably not. <laughs> I think I was sucked. <laughs> yeah, it's what I love to do the most. It's what I really enjoyed. And I was more than privileged to do it as a job and do it very often. So I think because 
I was already in LA. I had been there for a bit. We had, you know, stabilized ourselves a bit. And I was just like, okay, I'm focusing on this. And just like everything was your career and aspects of your career. Now with like influencing and also redefining what an influencer is, I feel like now even actors can do so much more. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah. back then it was like, even if you do have a side gig, which most of us did, I think the strike has <laughs> highlighted that for a lot of people that we had to do that for certain reasons. Um, it wasn't even something you could like post because it's like, what do you mean you sing? Are you a singer? Or are you an actor? Right. Like, no. You know, what do you mean you do real estate? Aren't you an actor? Like it was that kind of thing where it's just like you can't be a multifaceted person. <laughs> but that's that's definitely all I thought of at the time. I would I, I always kept up with dancing. That's always something I did for fun. I did singing, but I think everything was a little bit of like uh, something that was in some way, shape, or form tied to acting. I didn't really get to start doing more hobbies just for the fun of it or just to find different aspects of my personality again until my 20s and I had to be separated wow. from that part of the industry. I was like 100% that. If you ask me about my hobbies, I'm like, well, on my hiatuses, I sleep and I read. <laughs> like, I like travel. How old are you now, 23? Yeah. Are you still learning about yourself in ways 100%. that you thought you probably would have at a younger age if you hadn't had the experiences that you had? A hundred percent. I think, you know, I did mention, and I'm open about it, like going to therapy and everything for, for a little bit. It was like, for, for me, the case was like, there were so many things that I think you do as a teenager or as a child, but especially as a teenager, where you still have that very innocent mindset where you're not really thinking about so many consequences you don't have those dire consequences you're not thinking about your reputation or your career or your next step in life you're not thinking about any of that you're just like living day to day you know deciding maybe what you want to do in the future and just having experiences and just living in the now and like maybe paying the consequences later that's not something i did really and i realized that that's why i was so afraid to take risks, afraid to do different things, afraid to even, you know, cut my hair in a different way or do this or do that, or like a show interest in this. Cause it's just like, I, there was so much that I refrained myself from doing out of fear of being judged or it affecting my career in a negative way. Um, and I think the biggest thing was that I grew up to see myself or treat myself and go about my life as if I'm a brand, a product. Mm -hmm. And there is a way to do that for yourself, social media wise, and how to you know network and how to present yourself and the things that you've done. But how do you separate that once you're just on your own with your friends, with your uh, uh, partner or partners or whatever, how do you separate that? I was essentially living my life still thinking of me in a more confined type of way because everything was like, I'm a product <laughs> essentially. So it, yeah, I think I, for the past three years, I think that was a, a lot of like, kind of just who is Lilimar as a person, not as an actor and how that's to establish. Exactly why I like to have these conversations because that's what I want to know is who are you as a person outside of your brand? Because you are a brand, right? And that's, yeah, it's, that's so cool, but you're also a human being. And that's what I want to know about. It took me a second to like, be able to have even more profound friendships. Like everything was so, you know, just the, the, the top of the iceberg type of deal. And like, you know, I was a bit more, like I was very social, but at the same time, it's like you're saying a lot, but nothing at all. And you're not really establishing deep rooted relationships and friendships and sharing things about yourself. You're afraid to be vulnerable. You're afraid to kind of switch things up or do something completely different you know, with the way you dress, with your hair, with the music you listen to, with like who you're around. Like these are a lot of things that especially you do um, when you're a teenager. So it's like, there was a lot of things that I've caught up with now in my twenties that I probably could have done in my teens because of that. And because my attention was just fully on career, career, career. I hated coming back to Miami, but now I'm very, very grateful that I was able to come back here be away from things, just kind of spend all this time by myself and force myself into situations where I'm like, okay, especially with the strike too, if you're not acting, what are you doing? Mm. 
how can you open up other doors for yourself? Where can you learn other things? Where can, cause you can learn about human beings and, and connections with humans also in other places. And that still attributes to acting later on. Like everything can come back to acting. And I think yeah. the biggest lesson for a lot of people <laughs> is like, you can live 50 different careers and lifestyles and still be an actor. Mm. Like the auditions are always going to be there. So like if you do your auditions and if you do your work or, or whatever, like who's to say you, you can't run, uh, I don't know, a chateau on the side or you're, I don't know, you do horseback riding and you have that, you know what, you know what I mean? So it's like, it was understanding that I'm more than just an actor and I can be much more and other career choices, other areas, other hobbies are not a threat to it and are not out of your scope. And if anything, they make you a better actor. A hundred percent. So what have you spent um, the majority of this year with the strike doing? Um, I did a lot of uh, mainly uh, involved with charity and philanthropy, which is very good for my heart. Oh. <laughs> and just being around those people and but their stories are insane. Like... Um, I, I still have always been involved with Oceana, which is o uh, ocean conservation, uh, cool. marine life conservation, things like that. Um, there's been a lot of uh, smile train, which is for kids with cleft, uh, with a cleft. Uh, so it's a lot of different things. And I, I, I've definitely been able to meet people, especially outside of the industry. Cause that was the other thing. Like everyone I knew, all of my friends were also like industry kids. Cause you're just there all the time. So here it's like, you're meeting, you know, people that are in finance, people that are in tech, people that are in, uh, philanthropy, people that are in, in like any, you know, tourism everywhere. So it's like, you're meeting all these people, having different experiences, and maybe finding out different things about yourself that you didn't even know, like talents that maybe you were already aware of, but didn't know how you could use in different ways, um, or just things about yourself that are natural to you and make you really good at this one thing that you've never tried. So I think for a while it was like, I'm gonna stop, like I'm gonna take in the roses for a little bit, you know what I mean? Like I'm gonna stop like thinking so much about this and, um, career, 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 and I'm just gonna try and be human for a little bit, just be a person, give myself some hobbies, you know, make some new friends, travel, spend more time with my family, so, yeah. Who are your inspirations in life and also in your career? Huh. Um, I think a, a young one about my age is always Zendaya. I, I love Miss Zendaya. Have you met her? Um, yes, I did. I did meet her one time. I think it was at a one of those like PR events or whatever, and I was oh, cool. super fangirling. And me and my friend took a picture with her. <laughs> um, I still have, you have a photo. I still have that picture. Yeah, if you, and if I, you send it to me, I can put it on the screen. I yes, you I'm gonna try to find it. Okay. I think it was me and Rio, Rio, my other friend and co-star from Bell and the Bulldogs. We like saw her and took a picture. Oh. Um, but yes, she's absolutely wonderful. I still very much look up to Meryl Streep and Audrey Hepburn. Um, uh, there's a lot of other, I, I think, and that's been a good thing about TikTok. There's been so many other, I think, inspiration, uh, motivational speakers and just people in different areas that have kind of showcased your life and what it's taught them. And I've followed their journey a lot. I don't know if you've ever watched like the wizard Liz. I'm currently obsessed with her at the moment. I recommend her. She makes cool. me laugh and I love a lot of the stuff she says. And obviously my mom and my grandma <laughs> are, I think more than anything, they inspire me a lot. I've learned to have, uh, the ability to find inspiration in people near me, far from me, and also just experiences. Um, so I think now I've been focused on that too, of like learning these different lessons and trying to get out of my shell and like really be okay with how different I am now than when I was back then. What are you proudest of in your life? Hmm. I think sometimes I just want to sit, sit and say I'm proud of myself. <laughs> like I'm, 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 proud I, I don't tell myself that very often and I think I'm uh, when you're like go 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 you're always cr critiquing something in order to move and expand and to do better um, and I think there's not a lot of times where I sit down and just be like okay but this other thing all of this already that you've done mm -hmm. that's good like look at what you've done and then there are moments where like um, I think the latest ones I, I received a an award or a, a be recognized by the Women's Chamber of Commerce, wow. here in, which was insane. And I think God, it's moments like those where I was like, thank you, where I was like, 
hey, you've done something. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> you can recognize it now, <laughs> you know? And it's just like, to be there, to, to kind of be like, oh my God, like I'm one all grown up now and I have have a, a, a whole bunch of years of stories to tell. I've done insane things that if you tell it to other people, they'd be on the floor like, what? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and 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 I'm doing things that have affected people in a good way, um, meant something to someone, touched them in some way, shape, or form, and I've made my family proud, which is like the biggest trophy I carry. And I think it, I was the last one to kind of be like, yeah, like okay, okay, <laughs> okay, you did that, cool. I'm proud of you too. Then, what are you working towards now? Like, what are the what are the main goals in, in life and also career? Definitely happy to get back on set. And I feel like uh, I've just had, uh, I just did a short film with my best friend that I've known since third grade. Um, and now she's kind of getting into producing and having her dreams come true at NYU. Amazing. Amazing. And it's been a while because of the strike and everything that I've truly been able to do what I love. Uh, and so I think it's been nice to kind of come back to acting and back into the world a little bit with everything that I've learned now and who I am as a person now and mm -hmm. my experiences that I've had up until now. Um, so that's something that I'm, I'm excited. And now, you know, auditions are finally coming back in. So I'm excited to kind of be this person now and do that and see how that changes. But I think more than anything, and coming into uh, next year, I think I've, I'm, I'm finally at a point where I think I'm finally settling into adulthood um, and seeing myself as an adult, as a woman, and being less afraid of just trying so many things that I've always wanted to. Um, so I, I, I think I'm mainly looking forward to applying all of these things that I've learned into real life and, you know, traveling with friends or letting myself, you know, uh, challenge myself by doing uh, something, you know, in education and furthering that or doing more projects that I was scared to do before and now I'm confident I can do it. Um, starting a business venture that I've done here. So, you know, it's kind of viewing myself as a multifaceted adult <laughs> that, you know, before I was still a very scared but wouldn't admit it little girl. If your 15 year old self could see you now, what do you think she'd say? Mm. I'd like to think she think I'm pretty cool. <laughs> I feel like she looks. She's like, oh, I, you know what I mean. Like I, I, I don't even think I'll see myself like that. But if I think of like God, and I, I used to do this too. Like I think with meditation and things like that, I would think of my younger self, who's the one that started all of this, looking at myself now and being proud, mm. or, or thinking I'm cool, or thinking like excited about, whoa, that's who I get to be. That's what I'm going to look like. That's what I get to do. It's like the most healing thing. And it really takes you out of, I think, any negative cycle that you've got going on. Cause it's so easy to get, like get in your day to day. Like I'm not doing enough. I need to do more. I don't know if that's going to happen for me. I'm not smart enough. I'm not cool enough. I'm not this, 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 that, and the other, the person who got you to where you are now, they're in the back being like, you're cool. I'm going to be that. Sounds good to me. <laughs> well, this says, remember that once you dreamed of being where you are now. And I love it. That's so true, you know? 100%. But we lose sight of that. I mean, you have to keep working for, you have to keep pushing yourself and moving forward. And I get that, but there has to be some balance. I mean, I certainly haven't mastered it, but yeah. there has to be some balance of um, being aware that your younger self would kill to be where you are now 100%. as you continue to move forward. Yeah, I think the good thing for me was, telling myself, recognizing that, well, you know, it's, it's the simultaneous thing where like, you have the power of an adult, you can trust yourself, you can do these things. These aren't hills that are too big for you. Like every climb starts at the bottom and you eventually get there, like stop looking at the top for a second. So there's that, but at the same time, you are still very young. You're yeah. starting, you're an adult, but starting now, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's just like, it's all of these, doom and gloom things of like, I'm going to be a failed actor, or I'm going to be this, or I'm going to be that. And you're, you're how old? You're 23? Okay. Right. Like, yeah, okay. You know, so I feel like, I don't know, lately I've gotten myself 
I think a little bit more excited about life by saying instead of life is short, life is very long. <laughs> life is very long. And I've actually, I think, learned that through my mom because now in her 50s, like I think about all the changes and I feel like all the lives she's lived up until now that I'm like, girl, you've done it all. Like, you know, and I've seen her personality and how she sees herself change and grow and and improve like throughout the years and i'm just like we have a life to live like there is there is a very long road to go so there's uh this is a time to kind of settle down try all the things you need to do but you know stop thinking that it's like you're gonna like retire tomorrow what is something that you wish the world knew about you hmm I think the first thing that comes to mind uh, is that, I guess in general to remember that the way you see people on social media does not mean that is exactly who they are or that you can in immediately detail who that person is. Because I feel like there are times where I really got caught up um, and when I basically used to treat myself as a brand, I would get really caught up in trying to put like my whole being and personality in a picture because I wanted to be real and I wanted people to see me for me and like yada yada but the way you look means a lot of things to people and sometimes like you know what's in a picture is is a thousand words but stops at a thousand <laughs> and there's so much more to be said about you you know what what you see about people on social media take that with a grain of salt and yeah you know, like always it's a it's a super like uh, I don't mean to beat a dead horse has been talked about but I, I think a lot of us don't really internalize it and it's not until we see them speak or we hear their story like you're doing here in a in a more relaxed space yeah. where you're just like oh my god I did not think you were going to be like that <laughs> hmm. yeah you know? totally yeah I think there's a lot of people that obviously you know they see you and they think something about you and a lot of people still are in the cycle of thinking negative things about people. It's just like, I don't know. At, at one point, I'm just like, find the depth in everything or everyone you see. And I think life will be a little bit more interesting. What does it mean to you to be a part of so many kids' childhoods in the way that you were? I don't think I fully understand it myself yet. I don't think it's fully settled in even. I think I would get a little, I would understand a little more when I would go to events and I would see fans or like the kids themselves and them saying to me, like, I watch the show and I like it. Or when I run into people and it's like, oh my God, I used to watch the show now on Netflix with my little brother. Like, you know, it's like, and, and I've had people like comment or write to me, like you are my childhood. And that it, it's a lot all at once where it's like, this crazy thing of like, that was my, that was my dream. Oh. I, I don't even think it went that far because I didn't think That's... I could be a wow. Miley Cyrus of this or that yeah. and the other, like, you know what I mean? Like, obviously I'm not comparing myself to Miley, Miley's over here, but you know, I have so much left to do. And in a way I was on a show that people had in their households. Hmm. It's just like, I've had so many experiences where it's just like, uh, you know, and especially people I looked up to too, going like, oh my God, I, Recognize your face. I put your show on for my daughter. Oh, I'm just casually playing in your house. What do you mean? Who, have you heard that from people that you? Yes, people in like, I've had, you know, I've been in places like coming in for absolutely something different, like a, a, a philanthropy or for business wise. And it'll be people way outside of the industry, like, involved in politics or involved in like other stuff or just people that I'm like, oh, I, I like, I recognize you. I know who you are going like, oh yeah, like my child or like my nieces watch the show. I'm like, what are you saying to me right now? Like, what do you mean? So I think to me, it's still a little like insane or like even within my friendships, like I, I, I went, I think that was hilarious. I, one of my best friends, I, we went to like an ice cream shop and we're just like, oh, that girl's like his, his ex or whatever. And it, was, it wasn't awkward. It was just like, oh, okay, whatever. And I, I go to meet her and she's like, I watched your show when I was younger. I'm like, I'm everywhere. 
<laughs> I'm everywhere. <laughs> you can't escape me. <laughs> I told it to my friend. I was like, dude, we want to go see like your ex-girlfriend. And she watched my show. And I was like, crazy. That is, that is so funny. I just, it's little moments come up like that. And like, I, I, I think for a very long time, I use those moments, I think to, uh, and I think that's when I say like, you don't know how much that means to people sometimes. Like for me, when I felt my absolute worst, I would use those comments to be like, hey, stop mm. forgetting this moment in time. Stop forgetting that you did that. Stop forgetting that doing that wasn't just in a void. People watched it. People saw you. People knew like or know who you are. And even though you don't see it in front of you personally, you can't feel it. You can't touch it. It's like it's there. People wanted to dress like you or talk like you or found you funny or found you inspiring in some way even if you don't find yourself inspiring it's there it happened don't knock it yeah so. what is the hardest thing you've ever been through um i i feel like this goes to show how crazy just the mind is in general because i could sit here and be like you know like you know, going from immigrating from Venezuela to the States was very tough. Or like the first couple of years living in somebody's living room in LA was very tough and like taking the Metro and like all these things. Um, the crazy stuff in the in the industry itself are very tough. But at the end of the day, I honestly, I think the hardest thing I've been through was a battle with myself and mm -hmm. like pretty much from 2020 to now. Um, now I feel like I've, I'm in a very happy place and very proud, but you know, it took facing yourself and your emotions that you tried to keep very hidden from yourself to mm. get to where I am now. Yeah. Um, cause it was a lot of like, oh, I didn't even know I felt this way. I didn't even know I had that type of insecurity. I didn't even know this happened because of this and like facing it all at once. Or, or like to keep to you know it's like you keep pulling stuff out of the hat it's like yeah. god you know what i mean <laughs> so and like then trying to work through it as well like in real time it was just a lot it was very emotional it was very vulnerable and a lot of stuff that i was just not very comfortable with ever um and again i am absolutely privileged to have the family that i have because guess who was pushing me through all of it and hugging me through it you know so i think that was probably the biggest uh moment where i like grabbed a lot of my toughest lessons mm -hmm. but obviously all those type of lessons the biggest ones are the toughest to get through yeah this conversation's been so wonderful i oh, yeah, yeah i'm glad you enjoyed it we got to <laughs> chat um this is my favorite question i always end with this question um mm. What do you want your legacy to be? Hmm. Um, I would like people to remember me and what I've done as something that they can think back on and be entertained by, that they laugh, that they see the good in it and me. And I think that's tough because like I, I can't sit here and be like I want to remember I want to be remembered as like a legend I want to be a household name I want a lot of the time uh, I think I, I do what I do because it's so personal to me and I love it so much that I think it's like it was tough for me to separate the public aspect of my job to the job itself and I think, like I said, like raging theater kid in the making, it's like you just you do it for the thrill of the actual story. So I hope, you know, there's if there's anything to look back on, it'd be my work and how it affected people. I, I do like any person like to hear that. I something I said or something I did or something that was naturally within me something that i wasn't even trying to do was something that helped you or something that made you question something or something that propelled you to be in a better place or start your own journey in whatever you needed to do my work not only healed me but healed others and all the sacrifice that my family have made up to this point 
not only did what they wanted, which was to make me happy, but you know, it touched so many others beyond what we ever thought. Yeah. What a blessing. A hundred percent. I'm so glad that we, um, our paths crossed and I'm so excited to continue to watch all the amazing things that you do in and outside of your career. And um, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I haven't chatted with you in so long. I'm so happy to see you. And I, I love that you're doing this. I think not only is this like a, a great for everyone and everyone that watches it, but I feel like great for you too. And all the stories and things you're going to get, I, I feel like it's going to be kind of a, a blessing in and of itself too. Oh, it's, so. it, I mean, you're, you're, I'm looking at my list, you're 38, number 38. Um, and you. Like, it's just fascinating to me how everyone's story is different and there's no one right path. That's why I enjoy these conversations because it's just like, so fascinating to hear about everyone's, you know, different journeys. Yeah. Humans are interesting, man. <laughs>